This time we're going to continue with that Sony SLHF T7 home theater Betamax with the built-in amplifier. We've got great sound, but we have no video. So let's pick up where we left off and see if we can figure out where the problem is. Okay, that part works. Now, we need to figure out why the video doesn't work. All right, that's video going to the RF modulator, so we know that there is video going there, but I just don't have anything on the video out terminal on the back of the uh, the unit itself. We're just scoping it right here. If I take the if I take the output cable and just ground the shield and touch it to the video output there, I should have video. So let me just ground the shield or ground one of the shields doesn't have to be the video one, I can ground the audio one for that matter because they all go to the same place. And if I touch this on to video, now it's double terminated so it's not going to look correct, but uh, it's there. So what we know is that the video is working on the output, but or the, the, uh, the modulator, but there's nothing at the back for the output. plugged in now there's nothing there so typically these machines would have a, a second output it would typically go through another transistor a video output transistor could be the jack itself but more than likely a buffer transistor we'll flip open the video output board the video output should be on this board here because there's our modulator and just see where the uh, the output jack plugs in Kind of open that up so I can flip this open. Looks like it comes from the board on the bottom. We'll turn this back up on the side and uh, remove the bottom from it. This unit's actually quite heavy because of all the extra, the extra crap that's in it, such as that second power supply and power amplifier makes this unit even heavier than the old beta machines already were. Okay, video is on the bottom here on this board. Video switching, playback adjustment, color process, early surface mounted components. Look at the resistors on here. Video out. Video switching. Get Mr. Scope up here again and we'll just look and see whether I see it here on the video output terminal and there's not much there doesn't look like it anyway looking at the different uh, signals on here to see which one's the input and the output this is a switch So I got it traced down to Q811. This is the video output. I'll show you guys the scope. Yeah, that's the output from that uh, transistor, and that's the uh, was it emitter collector base? I think it is the emitter. There's the base. Okay. Yeah. Lots of signal going in. I got diddly squat coming out of this thing. So that transistor, either that transistor is bad or it's not getting its uh, supply voltage. Let's just check that. Okay, if we measure this transistor here. We've got a uh, good junction there, good junction there. We have a short emitter to collector on Q8, uh, Q8 
shorted emitter to collector. Let's see, right there. It's an NPM, so positive on the base. There's our 0.6 volt, our 0.6 volt there, but we should be open emitter to collector. So we have a short. And that would explain why there's no video on the output. Fortunately, we just have to take out the two screws and loosen the cover off there a bit. And the board will fold down. Got to undo some connectors and stuff in here to get some slack. Anyway, I can probably get that transistor out without too much difficulty from here and then I'll see whether I've got one that I can uh, just substitute in. Unfortunately you guys won't be able to see me unsoldering it because it's kind of out of your line of sight. But this is it here. I get the transistor out and the transistor measures fine when it's out of circuit. No shorts. Right, we measure it here. And no short. Um, but there is a capacitor, which is this one right down here. And this cap, I've just disconnected one side. This is one that's right on the video output and I've disconnected the negative terminal. And that cap is shorted and it was, put, it was making that transistor look shorted in circuit. So let me put the transistor back in. We'll change out that cap. That should get us our video back. So here's this cap. It's a uh, 1000 microfarad at uh, 6.3 volts. Short, dead short. And if I go to capacity on the capacitor meter here, shows as overload. If I go to uh, resistance, fourteen ohms. So let's get a get a new one thousand at six point three. Don't need anything special. So let's dig one up for that. Got a 1000 at uh, 35 volts. It's a little bit overkill, but let's see what I've got here size wise. I guess the closest I'm going to have is this 1000 at 35 volts. Lots of room to fit it in the board here anyway, so it's not an issue. As soon as I put this cap in, I should have video. Well, when I power it up, that is. But providing there's nothing else wrong with this unit. I know the minute here when I power it up. I have snow. You know what that means, right? That means I got video. So I'll just uh, clip off the leads, mount the board back in, and uh, start putting this thing together and test it.
And as you notice, I did not use a schematic to repair this unit. Schematics are nice when you have to start troubleshooting and chasing electrons. But uh, I learned a long time ago that if you uh, if you look at the the traces on the board, you can visualize and basically make your own schematic in your head. So the video output on here is up here. And it comes down through a trace, goes through that cap that was shorted, through to R282. R282 goes up to that transistor, which initially looked like it was bad, but it wasn't, just because of the shorted cap. There's another resistor here, which is what supplies the, the voltage, the bias voltage for the transistor, the source. So this is the supply line. It supplies power to the emitter. Um, it's a collector? Base collector emitter. Yeah, emitter. Um, collector is grounded, and then the base was the video signal. So we had video here. We had nothing. We had just bad, like very compressed, distorted, not not video over here. So I knew it was somewhere in here. Say so this transistor initially looked like it was bad. I pulled the transistor measure. The transistor measures good. The next logical place to check is that capacitor, which I checked and was shorted. And uh, sure enough, that's where the fault was. And caps don't normally short. Like you'll see them go high ESR, they usually go open. Um, a, a dead short on a capacitor is not something that is real common, but it does happen. So keep that in mind. The last time I saw a cap shorted was uh, uh, Technique's um, tuner that had no display. Remember, you guys remember that one? The uh, vacuum fluorescent display was extremely dim, and it was a shorted uh, cap, a little electrolytic in the um, could be the voltage pump because they used a, a doubler I think it was a doubler circuit or might even might have even been a tripler circuit to step the voltage up for the vacuum display because the, the, the transformer was only like nine volts and they needed like negative or positive 35 or something so they used a, a series of diodes and capacitors to pump the voltage up. All right, now let's plug this thing back in and uh, verify that it's working, and then uh, we can uh, finish this one up. So power, I have power, I have... can't let that play, but I can let this play. Let me just pull this tape off here. the way the part Nancy Dillard and uh, most of her life life. in Texas. I can play this. This was a uh, this was a Sony demo tape. Full of dropouts. Where's my tracking? Tape's got lots of dropouts, it's very old. <laughs> but we have sound, and we have stereo sound. Works a little better with the cover on, so it gets rid of the interference from the plasma. But they say this tape is, you know, 35, 40 years old. And it's been played a lot. Here's some of the different effects that this sound system has built in. So it's got uh, movie theater sound, where you can adjust the depth, concert hall, and simulated stereo, and of course just regular stereo. Has a bass boost, a balance control. Of course, you guys can't see what I'm doing, but. It has these controls on the front. Effect level for movie theater. Uh, volume. 
chord level, balance, right channel, left channel, movie theater enhancement mode, regular stereo, concert hall, This is a neat old machine. And relatively rare because in its day, Sony didn't sell a hell of a lot of these super beta theaters because it was expensive. Has a second play button on the front if you notice here. Okay, under, under the panel you've got your standard stop and your play. And your beta scan forward and your beta scan backwards and pause frame advance and slow motion I think the slow motion only works when you're in beta 3 on this if I'm not mistaken let's see does it work yeah you have to be in beta 3 I think for this tracking beta hi-fi I just, this tape is really, really, really old. And it's going to clog my heads more than likely. It has a second play button right over the front here, you see? So, so people that were using this, you know, they didn't want to open up the controls. You can load a tape and just push. Great band. Great, great jam band. Um, yeah, they could just put a tape in, press play on the front, it would light up, and play their tape back. Anyway, this one is done. I'm just going to clean the heads on it before I fasten the top cover on it permanently. And then I'll let the guy know. And Well, I say I don't know whether this is going to stay fixed or not. I, I'm hoping it's going to stay fixed because... Uh, you know, it all depends on whether he wants to buy that front loading mechanism from me is what it boils down to because uh, these front loaders are not, they're not common, they're rare, and I, I'm certainly not going to be giving it away. But of all the machines that I'd like to see it go in, this is one of them. But um, keep in mind I have two SLHF 1000s which use the same mechanism so I could very easily hang on to that as a spare for myself if you know what I mean I'd like to see it go to a new home but for now it's in this one here and I guess we'll decide when I get a hold of the guy that owns it he'll probably have seen the video by the time I talk to him but uh, he'll decide whether he wants this one repaired or not but as it sits it's fixed anyway um, thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one real soon bye for now